Matt Brown, town Matt council Brown. member. Mayor. No, I'm so sorry. Mayor Brown. Mayor of San Francisco. <laughs> it's such please, an honor. Please call me your honor. Yeah, well, it is your honor, your honor. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is Guy's Show, California Times. I want to thank everybody to, uh, who's listening in on this sort of impromptu uh, interview, conversation. Um, we're here in the historical museum underneath the library in San Anselmo. And um, you're retiring. I am. I did not seek re-election. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I have two more meetings. And I'll be done on the oh. 10th of December, 2019. I will walk away back into obscurity. Oh, no. Yeah. Matt, how <laughs> long, when did you get elected? How, how many years has it been? It's, it's been a full four-year term. Just I was elected in November of 2015. Wow. So I was sworn in, I believe it was the 8th of December, 2015, and this has been just about, gosh, has it been 200 meetings? Something like 200 wow. meetings. Wow. Yeah. That's a, Those are a perfect, you know, vignette for somebody looking in to, to, to and for you to, yeah. of, of time, you know, to have the four years, and it must have gone fast, but... Oh, it flew by. Um, I uh, started with a full head of hair. I was about 25 pounds lighter. And, uh, you know, the, the stress of living underneath the sword of Damocles for four years has, has certainly packed on the pounds and caused a few uh, follicular consequences. I've lost all my hair. I have better hair than you. I think, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that maybe it was just, a, just nature was... Uh, Oh God! No, I was I was bald before I joined the council. Okay, good. You but really, I did, you really had me. I probably had. had there. I probably have had have gained uh, fifteen pounds. Up. There is stress. What there you're talking stress. about is undeniable. Even in a little town like yeah. San Anselmo, wow. do you just sort of step into it and in the almost like on the first council meeting because you're sort of a rookie and you're. Uh, it must be step into it is exactly that's the right thing. Yeah. It is. You know, I'm in my day job. My vocation is commercial real estate, mm -hmm. and I've started. I started my career in 1986, mm -hmm. and as a young real estate agent, a single man with no social life, I would attend council meetings and planning commission meetings for sport. Mm -hmm. It was where, as a as a new person, not knowing the people in the industry is where I met developers and, and property owners that mm -hmm. were you know, bringing projects through the planning process, uh -huh. right? So I had, walking into this position, mm -hmm. quite a bit of experience mm -hmm. in public meetings. Wow. I mean, I've had projects that have you know, wound their way through the Marin County Planning Department for mm -hmm. eight years wow. and attended many planning commission meetings and mm -hmm. many board of supervisors mm -hmm. meetings. So I knew the drill. I was no stranger mm -hmm. to the process. And so it was actually pretty easy for me to come in. There's, you know, there are a couple different ways you can approach this mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. You can go along to get along. Mm -hmm. And I chose the other. I, uh, I'm, uh, perhaps the king of the four to one boat. My views are generally a little bit different. And what I finally concluded after four years of many four to one boats is, is that um, I'm either not very good at persuading my colleagues mm. to go along with me, or I'm out of touch. And either way, I, I, I've got other things to do. And so I don't, I don't really need to sacrifice my Tuesday nights and many other days in the week with all the other committee assignments that we have, uh, you know, for four to one votes. That is, um, that's an interesting uh, an anxiety-provoking um, dilemma. Yeah. That it speaks to the problems of our time. And just last night there was a town council, town council meeting. Mm -hmm which through the powers of the local uh, cable 26, I imagine, I got to watch it, some of it. Yeah. I didn't get to watch all three hours of it, maybe uh, 20 minutes of it, mm -hmm. um, on the uh, internet. Yeah. And you brought up early in the meeting. Yeah. 
a subject that touched on that, and I thought that was like a, a really powerful moment for me to witness, and I kind of wish I was there. It wasn't an easy moment for you. No, this is the, the moment where I read the letter from, right. from one of our citizens. Right. Yeah, I mean, last, at, last, at the prior council meeting, again, I could take the easy approach and go mm -hmm. along to get along, mm -hmm. or I could be a little more controversial. And back in, gosh, I think it was August, I had suggested that the state of California has two years of experience with adult use of cannabis. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's an opportunity to revisit the issue for our town. Mm -hmm. Early on, after Prop 64 was passed, mm -hmm. the town took a vote, four mm -hmm. to one, mm -hmm. that we would prohibit cannabis sales in, in the county, mm -hmm. I mean, in the town. Mm -hmm. What we did was we allowed a little loophole for someone to come in and apply for a specific zoning change, provided mm -hmm. that the location proposed met with the, the state laws, right? So, two people, uh, took that track only to be denied at planning commission and then you know this this i'm going to use some very technical um, uh, government terms this shit storm erupted where people, is that the technical term that's the technical term people came out with, with torches and pitchforks and a really well organized uh, um, effort now are you referring to a few months back, back yeah 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 yeah, and, then, and most recently, the mm -hmm. October 22nd council meeting, mm -hmm. where it was brutal. I mean, the, the anti-cannabis folks are pretending that it's not legal in the state of California, mm -hmm. and that somehow this product that is absolutely illegal and, and detrimental to children is somehow going to ruin their children's lives. And I'm taking the approach that this is not for children, mm -hmm. this is for adults mm -hmm. in full compliance with state law. I mean, you can go back and listen to the tape. I don't want to rehash right, that thing. Right. But the long and the short of it is, is it became this, this brawl mm -hmm. between a very small handful of people who view adult use as an appropriate thing for adults mm -hmm. and the, the group that, you know, we're, we're attempting homicide on their children. Mm -hmm. And at every time someone from this side of the, the of the audience made a point, it became this big cheering fest. Mm -hmm. So I received this letter from a, a very well respected citizen who's very active in our in our world, who suggested that I blew it. And I did. I allowed that to go on. In my defense, I had my own, you know, I was girded for this. Because you were also felt I like knew what you, I was. You were this onslaught of these people with different opinions. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so I read his the, the citizen's letter that night. And, you know, it's, it's not a place for these council meetings to become these boxing matches, mm -hmm. you know, where there's winners and there's losers. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We are a very deliberative body. Mm -hmm. We make decisions as a group. And they're well uh, considered and they're well founded. And, and it's not any one individual's decision. Mm -hmm. The body makes the decision. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact that I am the king of 4 to 1 votes, mm -hmm. um, I respect the decisions of the council. Sure. Uh, whether or not I want to spend another four years here is another matter. But, you know, if, if we all thought the same and we all thought like those people out there, I mean, we're not needed. You know, let's let the staff do what the staff is going to do. But we're the check. We, we bring up the crazy ideas. And if we consider all ideas, our decisions are better than if we just come in with a predetermined set of solutions and this is what we're going to do tonight. And, and, and that's a waste of everybody's time. It seems it seems like the um, it, it seems like that foundational proposition that you're just describing that is that the minority potentially a minority uh, point of view is important to the success of whatever the majority might believe that they're trying to implement. That is exactly right. And it does seem like, as a people, 
I mean, what right now, what I experience and witness that we're very extremely dismissive of sometimes hearing the other side for a, a number of issues. Any other any other point of view that is yeah. not our own is, yeah. is yeah. yeah, we're, we're very closed-minded anymore. Yeah. Now, it, it is interesting, I'm trying to silence yeah. my phone. Yeah, okay, well, you can, you can pause, <laughs> pause for a okay. um, You know, one of the very first four to one votes that we had was, um, you know, I, one of my first legislative efforts mm -hmm. was to open the doors of government to the people, right? We close our office no, at noon, so. yeah. Monday through Thursday. We're closed entirely. Still are, aren't we? Closed entirely on Fridays. We still are, right? Still. Yeah, I and, give well, some thought to that myself. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we'll take your money up until three, but if you want to do business, mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, talk to a planner or a building official, you got to make an appointment. So in my first legislative effort that went four to one oh. was to open up the doors mm. to the people. Wow. Wow. Okay. This is what Matt's in for for the next four years. Wow. Oh, that seems so elemental. I just, I keep wondering, when is somebody going to bring up this, uh, you know, possibility? When, when, when is this going to be on the agenda? So it was, and it, it there was, were arguments against it, I guess. Yeah. Fiscal, I suppose. No. No? Fiscal was not the argument, which mm. I could support, mm. right? Because the excuse was, during the downturn of 2008 and nine, there were staff cuts and we couldn't deliver right. the service. Well, we've recovered right. handsomely since then. Mm. Um, uh, but the issue is, is that the staff needs an opportunity to, to do process. The work, to process mm -hmm. reports and stuff oh, like that, yeah. and to which I submit right. that perhaps we're taking on more than we should. So the next four to one vote mm -hmm. was the regulation of chickens. You know, since 1974, you can keep hens, mm -hmm. no roosters, but hens, without any kind of governmental intervention. Because two neighbors failed to get along, a chicken haver and a person that didn't like chickens, mm -hmm. Uh, couldn't get along, so we had to hold community meetings mm -hmm. and all this other stuff, and and um, ultimately voted four to one to regulate chickens. You now need a permit to mm -hmm. keep chickens, mm -hmm. and you know my wife and I kept chickens for a little while in 2009, 10, 11, and 12, and it was in response to seeing a movie called Food Inc. and how right. factory farms produce. Mm -hmm animals for human consumption and we said you know that's pretty sickening let's take control of our food supply uh, but we have now as a government as a town have supplanted ourselves in between ultimately two neighbors who couldn't get along and if that is how government is going to be administered going forward you know, responding to every complaint until, uh, instead of, like my mom told us, go figure it out. Don't bring me your problem. You know, we now play the mom that says, okay, little children, let's set up some rules. And, you know, that's a waste of everybody's time. I think you send the kids off to their room and tell them to figure it out. Come up with a solution. You know, but don't involve dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that vote went four to one, and it kind of speaks to my, philosoph my, my philosophy about government. Mm -hmm. And you, we, we touched on this a little minute ago, and that is that I think that this nation took a huge pivot after the planes hit the buildings in New York on 9-11, mm -hmm. that we, we gave up civil liberties and rugged individualism to the government to take care of us for all of our problems, great and small, um, rather than dealing with our shit ourselves. And one of the biggest issues, an issue I ran on, was flood control and how I and several other people that were, that were uh, I would say, behind me, felt that flood control is is a very big problem, requires a very big solution that is probably not attainable and certainly not at the expense of sacrificing a, one of our, our prized parks. So 
I was here in 1982 when we had the really big flood, right? right? 1982, we kind of shrugged it off. Right. right. Oh well. Right. We build in the flood zone. Mm -hmm. Let's let's scoop up the mud and let's go forward. After 2005's flood, which was a considerably smaller event, terrible, catastrophic, all that stuff. I'm not dismissing any of the pain and suffering that people endured during that. But at that moment in time, all of a sudden, government needed to do something about the weather. Mm. It's a fool's errand. When you, say, when you say about the weather, you know what I mean? You, in, in, you're speaking with a slight uh, tone, yes. tone of, um, would that be irony or uh, whatever, humor, yeah. uh, put it lightly. But uh, because the solutions were uh, kind of structural within the valley to build holding tanks or whatever, we were right. actually part of the, the geoengineering issue right. of, um, that we're not going to. Yeah, Get into yeah. This. we could spend two or three hours yeah. just on flood control alone and my views yeah. about flood control, yeah. my views about Measure D and Measure E of 2015. Tell me about Measure D and E. Was that the traffic thing? or No, road road was a, that was the, the detention basin. Oh, the right, right, right. So one of my basic yeah. planks in my platform yeah. is what I called during my term effective, proactive government right. and where you... You find the need, you define the policy, mm -hmm. then you find the money to figure out how to do it. But it starts with the need. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the way government is administered, in, in my cynical observation, is complete reverse. We got a grant. We have money. Mm -hmm. Now let's go figure out a policy for some need. Mm -hmm. Right? It's backwards. And so we have the money driving the policy. And hopefully it meets a need, but you know the money is never enough. It comes with crazy strings attached. Or maybe is it maybe it's way too much is the other possibility. I mean, when when you see these things that uh, oh, you yeah. know a giant bill, it, yeah. I, I, I you get a twenty million. I wonder that it, it, this whole you know flush Bay Area with the dot com boom is just creating a all mess. All sorts because of it's too much money almost. Mm -hmm. You know, you have these grandiose schemes. In my, what I see, uh, I just feel a, right. kind of a, a, a community being crunched, the entire Bay Area with its success. Under its the, own, the weight of its success is yeah. it's rather debilitating. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, in response to the 05 flood, yeah. the, you know, the powers that be at the county mm -hmm. level got together, mm -hmm. decided to tax the citizens for a 20 year mm -hmm. tax mm -hmm. to raise upwards of $40 million that could be leveraged for flood control. Well, it, in 2010, when they've had the first flood mitigation plan of the Ross Valley uh, figured out, it was going to cost $100 million and it was going to be relatively easy and we were going to replumb the, the valley and go forward. Well, that was for a 100-year level of protection, and, mm. and 100 means a 1% chance in any given year we're going to have a, a, a storm, a flood stage, right? So we would address a 100-year event with $100 million. The damage, the economic damage caused by the 2005 New Year's Eve flood was about $97 million. So that, on, there was a cost-benefit there. It was, it was almost equal. Someone right. was measuring this apparently, right. or just randomly yeah. came out to be that, do you think? Yeah. Well, tw uh, five years later, mm -hmm. 2015, mm -hmm. that $100 million project mm -hmm. for 100, for protection against a 100 year event mm -hmm. had been $365 million, mm -hmm. and it was going to deliver about a 25 year oh, wow. level of flood protection. Mm -hmm. So instead of a flood, you know, from here to here, from here to here, it's a flood from here to here, mm -hmm. which is a pretty minimal event. Mm -hmm. But our cost benefit got way out of whack, yeah. right? So at some point, you got to ask the question, is this a solvable problem considering economics and politics mm -hmm. and, you know, other considerations? You know, maybe, maybe insurance is an okay solution for flooding. And furthermore, if you had to pick your natural disaster, you want flooding. Because you, you, get, you get a five days warning, you know, you can get everybody out of the way. 
You know, it's it shouldn't be this life or death situation that that the hyperbolic people make it out to be. You want to scare yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Think about wildfire. And I actually said that to the newspaper when I was running. I was in Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. Memorial Park was the issue of the day. Right. And I and I said to Dick Spots, when I said, you want to freak yourself out? Look at that hill. Mm -hmm overgrown with trees, those little houses sticking out of there. If a fire went up through there, people die. They just, I mean, it's horrible to think about. Flooding, you gotta try to drown in a flood because you know it's coming. And then you can have a volcano, you can have an earthquake, you can have a tornado, a hurricane. Those things are immediate and there's no time to prepare. With flooding, you can get out of the way, which is why I think all of the effort and resources that go into you know these into the flood mitigation thing should be rethought from a very fundamental level. It, right now, it, right that money sits on the table so, still. Uh, no, 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 it's been spent. Oh, it's so been there's spent. nothing pending with a, with new projects now that are... There is one project that is underway yeah. that has taken the money that would have been spent on Memorial Park that is going forward mm -hmm. and I will say it is a good project. And what is that? It is a combination of removing a building that constricts the flow of water in the creek mm -hmm. in downtown mm -hmm. and a detention basin on property that the County of Flood Control District had purchased way at the upper end of the valley. And what property is that? It's the old Sunnyside Growing Ground. And is it San Simo owns it? Nope. The County of Marin oh, owns it. Okay. And it's it's just west of Fairfax in, mm -hmm. in the county. Mm -hmm. It's, I can't remember, eight acres, something like that. Right. But they're going to be able to detain 40 acre feet of water. No, yeah, about 30 or 40 acre feet of water. That, with capacity improvements, is going to actually do a lot of good mm -hmm. for flooding in downtown San Simo. Mm -hmm. So this one particular building, mm -hmm was built in the creek with a foundation that constrained the flow of the creek. So right. water, water comes down right. at 5,000 cubic feet per second, hits this building, and is it's pushed right. into 3,500 CFS. So 1,500 CFS has to go around that building. Well, that's downtown, that's San Isamo Avenue. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, this building causes flooding. Mm -hmm. So with the grant migration from the Memorial Park project, which I truly believe was a park project, mm. not a flood control project. They just used it as a convenient, ex you know, the flood control. Well, they did want to put a big reservoir up there. But well, they were going to they were going to take our park and dig it down, right. fifteen feet in some places, fifteen feet, yeah. and all that soil material has to be hauled out of the town mm. in the back of a truck. Mm. And so, fiscally, environmentally, and f and in terms of you know, a result toward flood control, Memorial Park made no sense to me. No sense. I am much happier with slowing the process down mm -hmm. and the results that I believe mm -hmm. make sense intellectually, fiscally, mm -hmm. um, and solution-wise with respect to the San Ensemble flood reduction, flood risk reduction program, where, where we remove this particular building and do some detention or retention mm -hmm. way up valley. Well, it, it, all of this from the floods to the fires uh, does, you know, we're kind of reminded right now of what California, uh, sort of the fragility that I think everybody is starting to experience way more than 15 or 20 years ago now. Yeah. It's, and it's, I think it's, I think it's uh, exacerbated. It's, it's increased by the growing density of our, of our world and our, the Bay Area's growth issues, California's growth issues. Yeah. To me, it's like that sort of a, the intersection of a lot of issues, and I'm, I'm still optimistic that human beings are going to figure it out, but we do need a new understanding of what growth or even economic growth could be for us. I, I would agree. I don't know how necessarily. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, whatever we were doing in the past is, is not going to get us to where we're going. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to change our ways dramatically. Dramatically. Yeah. And it's, it's daunting and it's over, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it needs to be done at the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I can recycle an aluminum can and make myself feel good, but then I'm going to jump into an internal combustion engine vehicle that, you know, spews carbon, you know, or I board an airplane and I fly somewhere exotic. You know, I was listening to NPR the day and Jane Fonda was, she flies, but she commutes to Washington, D.C. to get arrested in a plane because she's screaming about climate change and yet every, you know, she gets arrested, she flies home back, I don't know where she lives, L.A., Wyoming, Montana, whatever. You know, she flies back and forth. Well, I, 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 I read that and I, and, I said, and I said something about that to a friend and it, it causes my mind to also go, mm, uh, but now I've, I've read that she's moved to uh, New York City so she can, or is I think we I don't know where. But you're, you're absolutely right. It is fascinating. I would take the four to one, I would take the dissenting vote on your thought. This just seems to be on my mind a lot, though I know we do need, quote, you say, take it to the top, uh, the leadership. But I, I, I do feel like we need uh, to see the opportunity of the local level still being um, where this whole transformation, God willing, because it's yeah. very important that it be, you know, that it happens, it has to happen, yeah. you know, for the kids of this century and for us even yes. while we're alive, that I think it'd be a lot more tend to be, a tendency to be more, a, po a possibility to be more success yeah if somehow these steps begin at the local level with individuals yeah. saying, yes. you know, I don't got to go to that exotic place. Yeah. I can have that weekend in my bicycling distance yeah. or even a, you know, a smart train maybe or God knows what. But, you know, think about in terms of... Or in your backyard. Or right? in your backyard. I mean, people come from all over the world to come here. <laughs> Why do we need to leave? It's perhaps one of the finest places on earth, right? Well... Yeah, and I don't like to trumpet it too much because I was reading about like, you know, destination, what is it, destination San Is this a new website? I guess. Yeah, I, I thought I read something like that, but it seems like the Chamber of Commerce is, again has this idea maybe of, uh, you know, the, the tourist attracting abilities. It just, it, to me, it's just, hey, it's just a, a beautiful, simple little town. This is fabulous Morgan County climate, uh, California climate. But there's great towns everywhere. I don't yeah. want to say, no, I'm diminishing it, trying to like <laughs> <laughs> Keep people away. <laughs> you know, but I think that the whole tourist thing is actually an issue with the planets. And I guess that's that problem of the economics versus Money. Uh, right. how, how do you, how do we, you know, build a, a world that maybe isn't so dependent on um, the global economics world, the Wall Street. And, uh, and and that their profits define how good our success here in San Salo is, mm -hmm. or anywhere. I mean, I've heard that the great majority of Americans do not own stocks, mm -hmm. but then again, the, maybe that 401k retirement fund is... Perhaps. I'll switch that around a little. <laughs> I, these, these solutions are way below the purview of local government, but I, I do think that you have to do what you can do. And, and, and awareness is the first step towards, you know, the, the cure. Um, San Anselmo, in, in the term that I've been on office, and I can't take credit for the leadership, but I, I certainly agree with the initiatives and have voted in favor of them on many 5-0 votes. Mm -hmm. uh, we banned single-use plastics. You know, if you, we need, we all need to get used to taking our own cup to the cafe and taking our own to-go containers in a, in a bag. We've, we've really got everybody I know brings a, brings a um, gar I mean a uh, shopping bag to the grocery store, right? Now, now tell me, because I've had this question in my mind lately about the single-use plastic ban. Is there yeah. a definition that I'm not understanding about what single-use plastic is? Because I see a lot, and I happen to be familiar with the world of food markets and supermarkets. Yes, you do, and I, right? Yes. And so in and our I, band, if yeah. you package it out of the town, mm -hmm. like Safeway, for instance, they, mm -hmm. that is packaged somewhere else, you can bring it in. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if the food originates here, like to-go places, comforts, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, they use paper, mm -hmm. uh, paper 
products right. that are ideally compostable. Now, what we've learned through this process is that our waste hauler and most waste haulers can't re can't compost these things because they have coatings on them that. So uh, even even they are right. But there are products that are being developed. But they and, might be. I don't know. That's a question too. Uh, is maybe those cardboard products still eventually will break down into um, you know natural. Eventually, you know, as opposed to the plastic, which will possibly, from what I understand, just keep breaking down tiny, tinier pieces of plastic. But um, but it's still the it's a mystery. Yeah. I, it comforts and it's Safeway. I mean, um, I still see the little plastic containers go out yeah. all the time. Are they well? Are they the band doesn't. No, not mm -hmm. yet, because it is going to is going into effect. I believe it's January first. And this is a town townwide order. And this is undertaken this year. Yes. Oh, this is good news. Yes. Mm -hmm. and it started with straws, yeah. single-use plastic straws yeah. that find their way down the drain and into the yeah. bay and right. into the gullets of our our creatures. And it's you know the plastic pollution is horrendous. More horrendous. It's sick. Yeah. It's 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 another form of suicide. It's just it's just. It has to be dealt with. It's, it has to be. And, and then so, our clothes, too. You know, oh, where's know. the polyester, you know? Hold the polyester, please. Yes. Go. Yes. Yeah. So, just to get, I'll dig a little more into that subject, just from my knowledge of the single-use plastic, because I'm mm -hmm. inter in integrally connected yeah. in this world, both as a consumer and, and an employee in a store that um, does that, or uses it. Um, a quote, recyclable plastic bag mm -hmm. for consumers as they walk out the door would not be considered single-use? That's a good uh, heavy question. Duty? I, I, yeah, I imagine that would be considered a, a reusable plastic product. So that would not be single-use? Well, you, you would bring it yourself yeah. to the store right. and you would use it yourself. You wouldn't be able to get that at the store. The store's because oh, that's no. the definition, I'm trying to get that understanding of where these markets need to go yeah. to get there. And even there's, and then we don't even, you know, there's a subject of the plastic, I think it's number seven, which is supposedly the plastic that breaks down, but now yeah, apparently only breaks down if you have a recycling center that has the special technology to break it down. Yeah. But, uh, all right, well, it's that's, all, yeah, that's, it's, that's good to... Uh, but you look at San Anselmo, it's one little tiny town, right. you know. No, it's huge. 12,000 people making a symbolic move like that in the abstract is yeah. meaningless. But if we can demonstrate the leadership and we can get Fairfax and build out. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it starts to happen, absolutely. right? And so while a lot of the initiatives that we have taken on mm -hmm. in the name of environmental sustainability mm -hmm. um, are symbolic in practice, mm -hmm. I think that they have real meaning in a greater sense. Mm -hmm. But when I say that what we need to do for the environment needs to occur at the highest level possible, I'm, I'm talking about the present the United vision. States. You know, and it's going to be very, very difficult with our economy and prosperity that has been um, uh, supported mm -hmm. by fossil fuels. Right. I mean, we, we know how to live otherwise. We just have to go, we're gonna have go, to, we're go gonna back some serious improvising. Go back 300 years and you know we can have horse-drawn buggies and stuff like that and it, it, you know it would be a very different life. But I'm afraid after the apocalypse, that's what we're going to be stuck with. But meanwhile, I have no illusions whatsoever that we're going to be able to get off of fossil fuels anytime soon. No, and as long as it's available, it's going to be in use, it seems. But I, I think that uh, I think that I think that we could. I mean, I hope, I believe that we could begin to do something. But my only hope still is with the reverse notion of that it's the up top that's the important thing but it's it's the the you and I you know the the, the friends that we know walking the street 
you start living that different life and by some magic powers find that it's actually more rewarding to yeah. slow their lives down to that, that there can be a consciousness of, uh, of a sense of I think purpose or mission and also a sense of I would hope I believe uh, maybe more happiness than being part of you know that this. other <laughs> but it's not you know well, we're that, all connected to well, it that, well, well let's hope let's hope <laughs> We have, I mean, this nation has evolved. It did all of its great growth mm -hmm. with gasoline, right? I mean, we were an agrarian society. But it was always growing almost exponentially, even through the phases yeah. of its growth. Uh, it, it was doubling population every generation, starting with 1776. That was like a, a, a writ of... I mean that, but, but and, we were always exploiting something. Oh, of course, yes. Right. It was all about this. We exploited joyful slaves. plethora of. Uh, we exploited the indigenous folks that were here first. Yeah. We exploited yeah. the Nature. environment. Yeah. We, you know, we yeah. dammed the rivers. Yeah. We did all that stuff. Yeah. You know, we've. I, er, I'm, no doubt, that in the cosmic time frame. Mm. Earth is going to shrug off this experiment called Homo sapiens without even looking back. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, a billion years from now. But, you know, that doesn't provide any solace to those of us who are vertical right now, right? This is the world we live in. We, we want to leave a better place for our, That's our to, progeny. I suppose and it's the just, uh, lesson that we're always... It came, it, it came at such a price. And you know our, what, success, our prosperity yeah. Oh, yeah. and success. Yeah. yeah. And there's, but we 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 of course are the microcosm of the whole planet. The whole civil you know, civilization is uh, caught up in this in this model and trying to. Yeah, I would submit maybe. we're a macrocosm of this planet. Everyone wants to aspire to this, mm -hmm. and it's very dangerous. Well, then that's the mission where where if if we. Um, change the, you know, the p paradigm of what we're aspiring to, if the younger generation, and maybe there are signs that this could happen, or maybe there are signs that it's not happening at all. You know, I think there's probably quite a bit of that as well. Yeah. Um, we have but, left San Anselmo a long, long way in the distance. Do you want to bring us back to town, or do we want to continue? Yeah, I think, I think we were kind of wrapping it up, but I, think, <laughs> I know we got way off, and I was, I feel like, uh, thank you, Matt. Um, well, bring it back into town again. You're you're stepping away, and actually, yeah. uh, there were a number of issues that I didn't even get to bring up. Bring them up. I got I got ideas. Let's talk about the coming in again. New for the the new candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Berta was just elected, uh, mm -hmm. and Miss um, Feynman Alexis was just appointed six months mm -hmm. ago. So when they step in. Yeah, there are assignments. There's a, a workload beyond, beyond the just meetings, the yeah. one every two week council meeting. Correct. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, we have, we are, San Anselmo is a very involved and engaged community. Mm -hmm. We have, oh gosh, I can't even remember, but we've got the Historical Society Commission. We've got the Open Space Committee, we've got the Sustainability Committee, we've got, I mean, there's the Arts Commission, mm -hmm. you know, there are all these, these volunteer organizations that do such wonderful work in our community. Mm -hmm. And each one of them has a council member liaison, mm -hmm. you know, assigned to them. We have the Flood Committee, we have the... Do they have to show up at every one of their, board, their the meetings? Board. I hope not. Yeah. I mean, it's expected that we go, not, uh, you know, I'm on maybe six committees, oh. and but they don't meet that often. I mean, the flood committee meets once, maybe twice. I could see, but, well, that's, that's taken me back a bit. I didn't quite realize, and it, it is expected that you, yep. for the most part, are, We're, are to attend. We are council liaison, so it is our job, and there's usually two assigned to each committee, the economic okay. development committee, whatever, that we report back to the council, saying this is what the economic development okay. committee did this week. Uh -huh. These are the issues that they're struggling with and, and that sort of thing. Did, did you say it was just two commissions per council person? Yeah. That's a, so there is that? Usually. You don't have to do three or four. 
The, the, no, the, no, no, no. The mercy rule you was misunderstood. Just two. Okay. two council members per committee. Oh, so let's say we have a dozen committees. That oh. means we're you know. So we're how many were you juggling in, in your course of all, six, off and on? Six or seven. Six or seven. Yeah. Good God, and you had to kind of keep up with them and yeah. and be the the person who knows what's going on with them on behalf of the council. Right. So that. Well, yeah. That's mm. the one that I enjoyed the most was mm. the. Marin County Council of Mayors and Council Members, mm -hmm. which I will call from now on the MCCMC. The Marin County Council of Mayors and Council Members mm -hmm. Legislative Committee. Mm -hmm. And we met eight o'clock in the morning on the third Monday of the month in Centerfell. And a representative from every uh, community in Marin, of the 11, someone from uh, Assemblyman Levine's office, someone from Senator McGuire's office, um, usually a representative from the League of California Cities, and we get together and we discuss mm -hmm. statewide legislation that affects cities. Wow. And we push out initiatives towards the state legislator through our local represent our state representatives. And, and it's absolutely fascinating to watch government two levels above us at the town level. So that, I really enjoyed that. I was so, also... So did you, were you enjoying it because of that that viewpoint that it gave you? That you were there now at the interface? Is yeah. that the idea? Yeah. Like what you... Like yeah, to and it's, you know, it's interesting to know and to at least have a voice in shaping state mm. legislation. Mm. So when you hear that, you know, something like Senate Bill 50, mm. which is basically, you know, allow you know eight-story buildings anywhere within a half a mile of the transit stop without local control so it doesn't come to us for design review and that's i mean it's development by right this is pending legislation it's a, a two-year bill it's in its second year now it's it's fascinating to watch that and as other senators are collaborating with senator wiener whose whose bill this is uh, trying to massage the thing to get it to a place where it can be supported at our at a local mm. level you know what size community does that apply to is it every community or is it just counties of 600,000 people or more uh, how close to a transit stop is it one mile is it half a mile quarter mile you know those kinds of considerations we get an opportunity to weigh in on and I find that incredibly fascinating and rewarding is it, we don't always get our way because Marin County is considered by the state legislature to be a bunch of nimby idiots that want to shut the bridges off. And you know, you know, you can build anywhere in the Bay Area, but mm. not Marin. I like nimby idiots actually. So be careful. For that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm including myself in okay. that. No, but I, yeah, that's a, you know, it's that's how we were viewed by the rest of the state. Yeah. Right? Will NIMBY sway South San Francisco Council decision? I know on the front page of the Chronicle. You know they will. And. The thing of it is, to me, is, you know, it's sort of a derogatory term, NIMBYs. It's, isn't it? It's looked upon, I mean, you are looked upon as somebody who is against either progress or against something that is for the benefit. Somebody, because of your own personal desires, because uh, uh, it stands for not in my backyard, as we all know. <laughs> Anyways, I find that ironic and I find it interesting because I think it's part of the whole battle of trying to make California a safe place to live and to be an environment if we confront and say no to this vision that you just, we got to get bigger, we have to have more, there's a more crisis, you know, etc. See, I'm, uh, I mean, you know, people, I, I'm, I may be extreme i don't know i don't think so no this is what makes but also, this is what makes politics so interesting right mm -hmm. is how can you navigate mm -hmm. local opposition mm -hmm. statewide legislation through the california environmental quality act mm -hmm. CEQA, you know to get anything done in the state which there's a lot of people that wear that moniker that are really upset mm -hmm. about you know the Senate Bill 50 and, and bills we like that, be, that are imposing mm -hmm. land use decisions, which for generations have been the purview of local government, imposing land use decisions 
on communities instead of having it go the other direction. It's you can understand the frustration why that works that way, but you can also understand the frustration why, you know, okay, here's the proposition. You, I'm a homeowner in this community. You want me to allow what? You want more people here to crowd my schools, clog my roads, drink my water supply, all so that you can make my house worth less? I'm gonna vote for you, son. You got good ideas. <laughs> yeah, like that has a chance. Right? Hey, well, you know so, what? You could use. You could have used. You could have pretended to have been a professor of history too. But I, I thank you. No, because it, it, it's absolutely right. I mean, it's not a. Uh, to me, there's a, a, a complete basic logic right. to the voice you just expressed. Right. I mean, I'm with that guy. You know, I mean, yeah. it might sound like a complete. You know, rude from the backwoods. But no, I could, I could, I could, I could, let me use a different tone of voice. <laughs> no, you, you would like me to do what? No, I would skip the professor. I, I should vote that way so that my home is worth less. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll consider that mm -hmm. in the privacy of the voting booth. Yeah. And you're running for what again? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, yeah. and the, you, you, you know, so that's why the state legislation is coming top down. Mm -hmm. is this is how y'all are going to do this from now on. And that... It is the is the friction that makes this so interesting, and you, also a complete and total waste of time. Well, do you think? I mean, I'm just inquiring here. Are is this organization that you say uh, the the, the MCC, acronym, MC? Yeah, that can influence state legislation. Is it actually kind of a almost crafting state legislation too? Well, it's and if so, is is that yeah, I guess uh, you could say uh, that. is that something? that is slightly beyond the purview of a councilman from San Antonio to be involved in crafting state legislation? I'm just, I just don't know. I well, well, yeah, I think that it is because uh, the state legislation has an impact on the lives of mm -hmm. our constituents mm -hmm. and, you know, the impact on our validity as, as mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. legislators, right. right? So, yeah, I think that, that, that our voice is one that needs to be heard Certainly, uh, certainly. Well, I'm just under, yeah, full stop. I'm not making it clear exactly what my concerns are, I think, but the, the sense is that by building a better SB50 or whatever, as the towns are doing that, are we already um, committing our local communities to, to acquiescing to a bill that's, after all, is now being crafted by the members of your community well, uh, or, or involved well, in it. I don't want to overstate our influence, all right. um, but, mm -hmm. but we're able to, through the efforts of a, a mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. astute and, and sharp young man who's our state senator, Mike McGuire, mm -hmm. Uh, we're able to get that legislation to a more rational, reasonable place. To simply sit state that single-family zoning is amoral in the state of California, it should never be built again, is kind of an overreach. To say that you need don't to... Don't tell me that actually isn't part of the, the, the bill. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that you get a bill by right, eight stories, if you're within a certain proximity to, I mean, well... That is a yeah. horrible. Then how do you define how do you define a transit stop? It is you know, it's two bus lines that oh. that go in two like north, mm -hmm. south, east, west that meet within fifteen minutes during peak hours. This is the hub. So, so you now can, here's the, here's the thing. Yeah. You can then have a transit agency while that legislation is going through run bus routes here. They get their way, mm -hmm. and the bus routes go away. No, so, know. so what we were able to do with, you know, what our senator was able to do with some input from us, is have Senate Bill the the the, the meat, the teeth of Senate Bill Fifty apply to communities that are much larger than San Anselmo, communities that have fixed transportation, not buses, but rail and ferry, you know fixed mm -hmm. transportation. Mm -hmm. Communities, towns, cities of a certain size, like say 50,000 people, in counties 
greater than 600,000 people. You know, Marin has 260,000 people. Mm. So a lot of the rules really only, only apply along the smart rail in Centerfell and Nevada. Yeah, but is this, so, so this is what um, MC, uh, MC? It's, and, it's and what the legislative have, committee have, does. Have, have pushed this to sort of a, this compromise? I, mean, I, don't, or I don't want to, again, I don't want to overstate our influence. Right. This, is, this is input that this we This is inside have, story, this is good. This is input that we have provided mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. our senator who mm -hmm. represents us. Right to try and craft this legislation that's coming at us. Well, I don't to, know, you know why we have to think that we can't defeat legislation that's bad legislation, as opposed to feeling the necess necessity to just uh, rubber stamp it with well, even a compromise. That's what I'm kind of curious about, and whether there's This a, is Senator Weider's third attempt mm -hmm. at this mm -hmm. notion. Okay. So, I mean, it's been defeated before. At some point in time, the dam's going to break. Well, but, you know, we've been able to. Well, maybe they can be breaking the other way. Yeah. Maybe Senator Weiner needs to like sit down. I mean, maybe California has to have a, a new vision of, of of local community rights, democracy, local people acting, living local. To me, I look at well, six hundred thousand a big city or Santa Fe, but still, why are we taking away the rights of that community just because it's a little bigger than small communities to make their own? Here's the saving grace. Guidelines, their rules. Here's the saving grace. This yeah. is why I don't get terribly excited about any of this. Yeah. Why I yeah. don't need to wear the moniker of NIMBY mm -hmm. is because the cost of everything mm -hmm. in the San Francisco Bay Area mm -hmm. is, and certainly Marin County, is so high that almost nothing is going to get built anyway. Well, right? I, I, so I don't... the big push is for affordable housing. Right. Well, you can't build housing that makes economic sense at market rate. Because mm. you know you, these bills that go through in That's order, have in order to get the support, in yeah. order to get the support of yeah. you know certain factions of the yeah. legislature, mm -hmm. you need to appease certain factions of the population, such as organized labor. So contained in Senate Bill 50 is a provision that you need to use union labor or provide a prevailing wage. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, but construction is so expensive yeah, right now. Materials are so expensive. Land is so expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, fees are so expensive mm -hmm. that you can't make it make sense at market rate. It's real hard to make it. Yeah, make but sense. if once you okay it and just say that that's the, the natural law that will be there to protect us, uh, who's to say that five or ten years from now, um, our beloved government or leaders say. Hey, here's eight billion dollars. Yeah, we need that more housing. The thing oh, is, we don't have enough. That eight billion dollars. We go to back to my little conversation. You do, you go back to that guy. Where's that eight billion dollars come from? It comes from the taxpayers, mm -hmm. right? And in, in the state of California, that needs to be voted in by a two-thirds majority for mm -hmm. a special tax. So if you want to, and there are there are bills mm -hmm. pending. Mm -hmm that want to tax everybody in the San Francisco Bay Area to create, well, they want to do it for housing, they want to do it for transit, mm -hmm. and at some point, you know, the, there's just not enough money to well, do everything. Let's wrap up our good good conversation. I'm, I did not bring my watch, and I don't know where we are. I think we may have gone over an hour. Our construction workers are driving long distances to get here. They're not living. They can't afford to live here. Mm -hmm. So. You, we're going to force them to put to. They're not going to leave any later because that's going to get them to the job site at nine o'clock, right? So they're still going to leave at five o'clock in the morning from some distant county, and they're going to drive down here. They're going to get here at six or seven. They're going to sit in their truck until they can make noise at eight o'clock, or they're fighting with school and commute traffic, regular commute traffic. You know, the office folks, the nine to fivers, mm -hmm. and you know that simple little thing where we dishonor. Workers, see, I'm, I'm kind of a well. I like, I like, I like your know, fighting spirit, but but right. I also like the, the, the notion of the residents who live here and 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 get to wake up uh, without the this is uh, not a country club sauce, right? It's not a country club. This is a, not a country club. This is. I'm sorry, did I disappoint you? Well, it's 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 our it's, it's our it's, it's, it's a community yeah. where people work. Yeah. You know, if you have to, you know. 
Yeah, but the community itself isn't generally, even though people can repair and build and occasionally build a new place, this is a residential world. This is not the industrial factory zone for, for occupation. So this is where people... I'm just get, saying, get, so I, this is a hardship on the worker. Okay. And so I am, I, I think... I would have sided against you. Okay. And, well, I, I sided against myself because I had to vote, and these are the compromises that you have to make, okay. because I had to vote did, for, did you, did to adopt the state building codes, and no one was, my colleagues weren't going to go with me no. to kick this little thing All right, out. All right, so to make sure I completely understand, the outcome was that now in San Anselmo? You can't make construction noise until 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And, and yesterday it was 7 o'clock in the morning. I see. Right? Mm. So it, it's going to have dramatic impacts, okay. even even for that person. And it's you know mm. the reason we get complaints. Yes. Like here we're back to the complaints. We're complaining about the next door neighbor's chickens again. Yeah. So how much yeah. does government want to oh. regulate yeah. and referee yeah. neighborly behavior? It's a little bit because it's not neighborly. It's it becomes somebody's. Um, Profit. Uh, this is their now their business in the residential zone. I'm going to make a. This is part of my money making profit. In so I'm not tentative. necessarily. Uh, not, well, I mean yeah. that maybe for the that's property okay. owner. That's okay. Maybe for the property owner, but not the laborer. Yeah. So we're, the laborer is the 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 working man mm -hmm. and woman mm -hmm. is 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 being put out. Well, I don't think it's that. By what I call the leisure class. I'm we'll leisure see how it works out. out. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it works out. Yeah, but the yeah. community is changing. Yeah, yeah. It is definitely changing. You know, yeah. when I was growing up, this was a blue collar place. Yeah. You know, it was full of working people. Yeah, no doubt working people. But, you know, somebody might have like opened the window of their bedroom and said, shut that damn thing off. So I just, you know. Look, I was, we had a council meeting that went until after 10. Yeah. I did, you know, and it was, we had a, I didn't get to sleep until after midnight, mm -hmm. and I was up at five o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, seven o'clock in the morning is late. It is not early. And for a lot of other working people, seven o'clock in the morning is when you, you start your day. That's a great way to wrap it up. And I need to be starting my day at least at six in the morning. All right. I gotta go to a fire board uh, meeting now. Oh, for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's, it's not easy, but uh, thank you for... Uh, Guy, it was a pleasure. For, thank you for yeah. four years, thank and you. I wish you'd You're, still be there. Yeah, well, thank you. It, it has been rewarding beyond belief, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also time for me to move on. At some point, I, I never wanted the job, but I was mm -hmm. always willing to do it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it's important that I leave before I like it too much. You know what I mean? Okay, all right, that's a, you know, I get that, though sometimes I think it may be good to have a few, well, whatever, you know, we, we, we'd like to see people who are good at what they do, Yeah. you know, I'm not necessarily for the strict term limits of, of you know, that you have, one has to be out of an office. I used to be, I have come completely around on yeah. that one. Yeah, a little experience can be a value to the community. There's so no know. question. Yeah, yeah. You get run over if you if, yeah. you if you don't have experience. Yeah, yeah. And just as you start getting effective, you're kicked out. Bad uh, idea. Yeah, I, I tend to be. Bad uh, idea. I tend to be. You know, that goes back to you know, overly regulating it's, what. Yeah. Somebody. That's what election. It, it could be wrong. Right? It could be right. I mean, this guy. But hey. You're, you're free to run for office. Yeah, that's and, what elections are for. Yeah. Anyways, Matt. Guy, it was a pleasure. We did okay. <laughs> <laughs>